Hi, and welcome to my video series of Mole Bio Explained in 3 Minutes, where I explain a concept of molecular biology in less than 3 minutes. It might be short, but it has all the information to save your ass before the day of exam. So if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. What are you waiting for? So in this installment, we'll be talking about the shuttle vectors. So whenever you hear the term shuttle, what comes into your mind? So in my mind, it reminds me of a shuttle taxi or a shuttle cab, which take you from one place to another place, right? So shuttle vector are simply specially engineered plasmid, which are engineered in such a way that it can propagate and it can segregate in two different host species. Let's say a bacteria and a eukaryotic species yeast. But you'd be surprised to hear that not only in bacteria or yeast, these shuttle, ve the shuttle vectors can be used to segregate plasmid from two different strains of bacteria, let's say one gram positive and one gram negative bacteria. Or even there are some adenovector, adenovirus based shuttle vectors which are used to propagate uh, plasmid between E. coli and mammalian cells. So shuttle vectors are used to generally segregate your plasmid in two different species. So now we'll look at some features of the shuttle, shuttle vectors and how they are different from other vectors. So first feature is not unique, which we talk about first is the multiple cloning site, which should be a feature of every cloning vector. So where you clone your gene of interest. Now, since it would be expressed in both species, like both the host species, let's say for uh, bacteria or East, so it should have host specific promoters otherwise the transcription and the translation of from this vector is not possible right so it should have host specific promoter other than that this plasmid should be replicated into the both the hosts so it should have let's say if it is uh, between bacteria and yeast it should have bacterial origin of replication a selectable marker in bacteria for example an antibiotic resistance gene Similarly, let's say if, if it is a bacteria and yeast shuttle vector, it should have yeast oria as well. It should have yeast selectable markers, let's say some URA3 or something like that. It should have also some sequences like ARS and centromeric sequences, which are essential for propagating it inside the yeast, right? In short, these vectors has all the features to clone it inside a bacteria or grow it inside a yeast. And that makes this, makes these uh, uh, vectors so useful. So in short, we talk about the advantages. So the main advantages is like it can be easily grown and manipulated inside a bacteria. So it's easy to grow plasmids inside a bacteria, right? Which is like comparatively uh, faster and easier to grow them in eukaryotic species like yeast. But there are certain disadvantages of this system. That is, it has low carrying capacity and sometimes it is not compatible in the host and so on and so forth. So there are also some disadvantages regarding these shuttle vectors. But however, sh most of the expression vectors these days which are used in mammalian expression vector are shuttle vectors which are pretty useful and they are used to propagate it inside the E. coli and then the manipulation is done in the mammalian cell. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video give it a quick thumbs up and don't forget to leave your comments thank you